Hi, friends. Today, we will talk about vertebrate animals. Do you know which ones they are? Vertebrates are animals that have an articulated internal skeleton. This skeleton supports the body and allows them to move. Vertebrates are classified into five groups, mammals, birds, fish, amphibians, and reptiles. Oh, you guys caught me dancing this dance. I think I've got the hang of it. So I will show you another day because today I have come to talk to you about a group of vertebrates, mammals. Do you know what kind of animals these are? No, that's what I'm here for. Mammals are viviparous animals, meaning they are born from their mother's womb. Mothers have mammary glands that give milk to feed their young. Inside their mouth, they have teeth to chew their food. Mammals breathe through their lungs. They are warm-blooded animals. And the majority of them have hair covering their bodies. They can live on land, in the water, and some can even fly. And now, some fun facts about mammals. The biggest mammal is the blue whale. It can measure up to 30 meters long. A little more than a basketball court. Oh! A horse is another mammal. Did you know that its teeth don't stop growing throughout its whole life? And here you have another mammal. What? Where is it? It's me! We humans are also mammals. Well, I am going to keep practicing my dance. See you later! Hey guys! Are you ready to learn a few things about animals? Ah, ah, animals! Animals! Hey! Don't repeat what I say! Ah, ah, say! Say! Oh, always the same! Well, guys, today we are going to talk about another group of vertebrate animals. Birds. <coughs> birds! Birds! Birds are oviparous animals, which means they are born from eggs. They walk with two legs. And they have two wings that allow them to fly. Although, there are some birds like the ostrich and penguin that don't fly, even though they have wings. The bird's skeleton is light because their bones are hollow. Birds can breathe thanks to their lungs. And they are warm-blooded. They eat with their beak that has no teeth. Ugh. Their body is covered in feathers. Did you know that the heaviest bird in the world is the ostrich? No wonder it can't fly. Poor thing. A bird that can fly is the eagle. Incredible. Incredible, incredible. You again? Watch what happens if I catch you. Hello, hello. How are you, mateys? Not one is biting. Well, later I will continue because today I am going to talk to you about another group of vertebrate animals. Fish. Fish are aquatic animals that can live in fresh water or salt water. They are oviparous meaning they are born from eggs. They have fins to move around the water and they have a tail at the end of their bodies, helping them to swim easily. As you can see, their bodies are covered in scales. Because they are aquatic animals, they breathe through their gills. They are cold-blooded animals, which means their body temperature varies depending on the water temperature. 
and they have a simpler skeleton than other vertebrates. Did you know that there are fish like salmon and eel that travel all the way from areas of salt water to areas of fresh water? What a trip! And that is all about fish. Oh, I think I've got something. See you later. How's it going, guys? Today we are going to talk about... Oh, I had a frog on my head and you didn't even tell me. That was scary. Well, today I have come to talk to you guys about another group of vertebrate animals, amphibians. Amphibians are oviparous animals, which mean they are born from eggs. The babies are born in the water and breathe through their gills. When they grow up, they can live on land or in the water and breathe through their lungs and skin. Their skin is moist and they don't need hair. They are cold-blooded animals, which means their body temperature varies depending on the air temperature. Did you know that amphibians are the only vertebrates that are born with a tail and live in the water? When they get bigger, they grow four legs and live on land. This change is known as metamorphosis. That's everything about amphibians, friends. I hope you guys liked it. I'm going to stay here with my new friend. See you later. Hi, friends. Today we are going to talk about another group of vertebrates. Today we will talk about... Oh, it almost got me. Today we will talk about reptiles. Reptiles are oviparous animals, meaning they're born from eggs. Their bodies are covered in hard scales. Their legs are really short. Actually, some don't even have legs, like snakes. Some reptiles have a shell, like a turtle. Good morning, turtle. They are cold-blooded animals, which means their body temperature varies depending on the air temperature. They breathe through their lungs. They usually live in warm places. Did you know that reptiles live longer than any other animal? Some, like turtles, can live up to a hundred years. That's all about reptiles. Ah, I hope you guys liked it. Ah, I'm going to get going. I don't think I'm welcome here. Ah, help! What's up, people? Today, we're going to talk about invertebrate animals. Do you know which these animals are? Invertebrates have no backbone or skeleton. Some invertebrate animals have hard outer shells, which they use for protection. Invertebrates fall into six groups. Mollusks, worms, arthropods, cnidarians, echinoderms, and sponges. Do you want to learn more about them? Here they come. I'm going to tell you about them one by one. Wow, look at all those ants. Have you seen how they all work together as a team? But wait, what is this? Phew, I hope those ants weren't carnivore. Well, today I'm here to talk about a group of invertebrate animals, the arthropods. Do you know what kind of animals they are? You don't? Don't worry, I'll explain it to you in a jiffy. Arthropods are very different from one another, but they have a lot of things in common too. They have an external skeleton called the exoskeleton, which protects the soft parts of their body. Some arthropods shed their exoskeleton several times throughout their life. This is how they grow. This process is called molting. Arthropods have jointed legs. They use their legs to move around. 
Depending on the number of legs they have, we divide arthropods in different groups. Insects have six legs, like this ant. Arachnids have eight legs, like this spider. Crustaceans have 10 legs, like this crab. Myriapods have more than 10 legs, like millipedes. Arthropods live on land, in the water, and they can even fly. These are some interesting facts about arthropods. Arthropods is the largest group in the animal kingdom. They are more than 10 million different types of arthropods in the world. Massive! Did you know that there is an ant species which can lift 100 times its body weight? This is equivalent to a human lifting the weight of four cars. Amazing! And that is all about arthropods, folks. Cheerio! Come on, guys! Speed up! Faster! Faster! You can do this! My, my. This is going to take a while. Well then, in the meantime, I'm going to tell you all about another group of invertebrate animals. Mollusks! Do you know what kind of animals mollusks are? You don't? No problem. I'll explain it to you. Mollusks are very different from one another, but they also have a lot of things in common. Their body is soft. In some cases, it's protected by a shell. In other cases, they have no shell at all. Mollusks are oviparous animals. This means they hatch from eggs. Mollusks are classified in three groups. Gastropods, cephalopods, and bivalve. We, the gastropods, are mollusks, and we move thanks to our muscular foot. Did you know that our eyes are on our tentacles? Snails like me belong to the gastropods group. We, the bivalve mollusks, have a shell which closes tightly to protect us from predators. We live in the sea and we are normally attached to rocks or sand. Clams like me belong to the bivalve mollusks group. We, the cephalopods, have no shell, but we have long tentacles. We only live in water. Squids like me belong to the cephalopods group. The majority of mollusks like squids, for example, move swimming. Although there are mollusks like marine limpets that live attached on rocks or razor clams that live on the seabed under the sand. Did you know there are squids that are as high as a five-story building? Amazing! Oh no, you're right where I left you. I think that this snail race wasn't a good idea. Well. I'll cheer them up more eagerly. Cheerio! Come on, guys! Move along! Faster! Faster! You can do this! My, my, my! Hey there! How's it going? Today, I'm doing some gardening at home. It'll turn out just great. But wait, what's this? Look! It's an earthworm! So cool! Hey, buddy! Don't be shy! Say hi! Well, that reminds me, I have to tell you about this group of invertebrates, the worms. Do you know what kind of animals worms are? I'll explain it to you. Worms have long, soft bodies. Their skin is moist. They breathe through their skin. Interesting, right? As you can see, they don't have legs. That's why they crawl, thanks to their body muscles and their setae. These are tiny bristles that worms use to grip on the soil they move. Worms can live on land, like earthworms, or in the water, like leeches. Be careful if you ever come across them. Do you want me to tell you some interesting facts about worms? Did you know that earthworms are really important for soil health? They dig up burrows helping to oxygenate the soil and to transport nutrients and minerals as they tunnel along. How long would you say the longest worm ever found measures? One foot? Two? Five? Nope! The largest worm ever found measured 180 feet! 
longer than an Olympic-sized swimming pool. You are a bit smaller. I'm letting you be, so you can grow. Well, guys, I'm going back to my gardening. See you around. <sighs> I've fallen asleep. It's so late. Time to go home. Wow! Look! A fluorescent jellyfish! So cool! There's tons of them. I'll try not to move much. I don't want to get stung by them. Well, they're swimming away. So I'm going to tell you all about the invertebrate group those jellyfish belong to. Cnidarians. Have you ever heard of them? Cnidarians are marine animals. They are divided in two groups, jellyfish and polyp animals. Jellyfish are almost transparent and their body is gelatinous. They look like an umbrella. Their mouth and tentacles are in the lower part of their body. The tentacles have toxic substances which jellyfish use to capture their prey. Oopsie, I'm afraid it's lunchtime. Some jellyfish swim in the water and others are simply dragged by the sea currents. They're so lazy. Polyp animals form another group of cnidarians. They live on reefs or attach themselves onto rocks using their suckers. Polyps also have tentacles and a mouth which they use to feed themselves. But unlike jellyfish, their mouth and tentacles are in the upper part of their body. Watch out! Cnidarians are really hungry today. As you can see, there are cnidarians of many sorts and colors. They really look so pretty. Have you ever been stung by a jellyfish? If you ever see one in the sea, stay calm and swim away slowly. Jellyfish never attack people. They would only sting if you are in their way. Look, there's one over there. I'm swimming away slowly, so easy. That's all about cnidarians. I'm going back to my swim. See you around. Hello everyone, today I'm here to tell you about... Whoa! What is this? I think I've stepped on a sea urchin. Lucky it was a small one. Well, back to what I was going to explain. The first group I'm going to tell you about is called echnoderms. Do you know what kind of animals they are? I'll explain it to you. Echnoderms are exclusively marine animals. They move about very slowly on the seabed thanks to their tiny tube feet. This starfish, for example, has tiny tube feet and a mouth at the lower surface of its body. The body of the sea urchin is covered with movable spines. Whoa, did you see that? Look at those spines. Watch out for them or you'll get stung. Sea cucumbers and sea lilies are also in the echnoderms group. These animals are so much fun. Do you want to hear something really interesting about them? Did you know that when a starfish loses one of its legs, a new one will grow in its place? There's another group of invertebrates I want to tell you about today. Sponges. Sponges have bodies full of pores. Many sponges are soft and smooth, but others can be hard and rough. They only live in the sea and the oceans, and they attach themselves onto rocks and reefs. Sponges can't actually swim. That's why, for many years, we thought they were plants instead of animals. Do you know why? Sponges can't make their own food like plants do. They use their pores to feed on plankton and tiny particles of bacteria in the water. Did you know that sea sponges have been used for centuries for washing and bathing? That's all about echnoderms and sponges. I'm going back to my swim. See you around. Do you want to keep on learning? Try for free our Smile and Learn platform for a month and enjoy all of our games, videos, and interactive stories. Go for it. Download Smile and Learn on your mobile, tablet, or PC.